What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the J Area Podcast. My name is Jose Ramos Jr. And what a beautiful thing professional wrestling is. I mean, you look at this week alone. You look at Monday Night Raw alone. I remember heading into that episode of Monday Night Raw. If you follow the YouTube channel, if you keep up to date with the videos, I did upload a short in which I said that this episode of Monday Night Raw had potential to be one of the biggest episodes in quite some time. Just given what had happened at Clash of the Castle, and how stories were going to progress. And I, I, you know, I, for one, I think it really lived up to the hype. I think it delivered. Obviously, if you had watched last episode of the podcast, I, you know, shared my reaction and my thoughts in in great detail about the Wyatt Six debut. I won't spend too much time talking about them just because I was able to get everything out of my system in that video. So please, if you haven't already, Check out the last episode of the podcast where I discussed the Wyatt Six, as well as check out the the YouTube video that I uploaded uh, yesterday where I detail each member of the Wyatt Six and how they possibly connect to the group itself. But enough plugging there. You look at the state of professional wrestling right now. And And I know for me personally, I do talk a lot about WWE, but I can't help it. That was the organization. That was the company that I grew up on. It's one that I've continuously followed ever since becoming a fan in the year 2000. And granted, I may not be that old, but that was, what, 24 years ago. I was two years old at that time. It's something that hasn't died out. You know, it's I've always said it's the bug I was never able to get rid of. Once I got big by that, the wrestling bug, I couldn't, I couldn't let go. There was some time, you know, when the year... You know, 2011 and maybe 2018 that I might not have kept up. I might not have kept up, excuse me, look at that, I'm already at a loss for words. I might not have kept up as much as I would have liked, but I've always maintained a sense of what was going on in the ongoing events, you know, for the major storylines, that is. And I go back to that episode of Monday Night Raw. So many things happen. I mean, you look at Alpha Academy and how they've seemingly stepped up to Chad Gable and left him. And speaking of left, you look at Drew McIntyre. He's apparently quit the WWE because of what happened at Clash at the Castle. You look at the debut of the Wyatt Six. You look at Braun Breaker throwing his name into the Intercontinental Championship title picture. Obviously, what's going on with the Judgment Day, Dominic Mysterio, Liv Morgan, Damian Priest, that whole saga... And then the show ended with the main event, Jay Uso delivering on his promise and advancing into the Money in the Bank matchup this upcoming month. And then you look at NXT. NXT would have a little bit of more cameos from TNA as Joe Hendry and Frankie Kazarian would make their way into the Battle Royal that would crown the new number one contender for the NXT Championship. The state of pro wrestling right now, I think, is at an at an all-time high, at least in the last 25 years. Obviously, when you look at the late 90s to early 2000s, that attitude era, you couldn't top it. There was a sellout crowd. There was a hot crowd every night. And the way it's looking now, it's like we're going back in time. We see so many fans that are participating in chants, singing the songs, bringing signs. The show itself, the presentation, is it's fantastic. I have no complaints. It's, it's become really appointment TV. I have to sit down and make sure that I'm watching each episode just to keep up with the storylines, but also just to keep up with the excitement that's been going on. That That's the little bit of a recap on what's been going on this week. But on this episode of the podcast, I did want to talk about Friday Night Smackdown. I don't feel like I give a lot of love to Friday Night Smackdown because of the way the scheduling is when it comes to the podcast. But being that it is Friday and Friday Night Smackdown will be airing later tonight, I have to address what is going on with Cody Rhodes. You see, Cody Rhodes, who had defeated AJ Styles in the I Quit match at Clash of the Castle, was a successful title defense for our reigning and defending WWE champion. And what I thought was an entertaining matchup, if you saw the review episode of the podcast where I talked about Clash of the Castle, please do so. Share it, like, subscribe. You know the whole deal when it comes to the podcast and the YouTube channel. But if you saw it, you would know that I was a fan of the matchup, the 
the ending itself I thought was a little bit anticlimactic just because of the abruptness to it. But then, as I said, upon further evaluation and consideration, yeah, I, I don't I don't blame AJ for, for quitting when AJ Styles is threatened with the steel steps. I mean, yeah, any sensible human being wouldn't want to get hit with that. So I can't blame him for that. So in terms of logic, it makes sense. I just feel like the match kept building and building, and I thought, I don't know, maybe, maybe I was expecting too much. Maybe I'm at such an all-time high in terms of expectation and fandom that I kind of, you know, got ahead of myself there. But what I did fail to mention in that episode of the podcast, of the recap episode of the Clash of the Castle event, was what happened afterward. And that was Cody Rhodes is heading up the aisle way, about to make his way back to Gorilla, but he's met with Solo Sokoa. Solo Sokoa essentially introducing his name into the WWE title picture, which I find very ironic because for those who have been following the product ever since he defeated John Cena at Crown Jewel last fall, Solo Sokoa hasn't really been that hot in terms of a winning streak. In fact, correct me if I'm wrong, but his win last week was probably his first win since defeating John Cena. And I'm not counting live events or house shows. I'm talking about on TV what the general public is seeing. I'm talking about one-on-one, no tag team business, no no contest or DQ finishes. I'm talking about one-on-one, he gets a victory. And the question I have to ask, is it too soon to have Cody Rhodes associated with the bloodline? He was feuding with them for the better part of a year. Obviously, the lead-up to WrestleMania 39, bits and pieces every now and then in between, and then at WrestleMania 40, I mean, you know the story. He finished it. He won the title, defeating Roman Reigns in the main event of arguably the biggest WrestleMania of all time. So there was a little bit of trepidation, at least on my end, when I look at it in the sense of, is it too soon? Is it too soon to associate with the bloodline? But again, if we were to look at it in terms of a logical point of view, it makes sense. Solo Sokoa wants to take back the championship that he, that he believes his family, that his bloodline rightfully deserves. If Roman Reigns couldn't do it, and he's no longer here at the moment, I'm going to take responsibility. I'm going to step up. I'm going to win the championship. That's the idea that Solo Sokoa has. And since he's introduced his own members of the bloodline in Tamatanga and Tangaloa, why wouldn't he? You know, it makes sense. When you have that type of backup, you got, you know, you got a little bit of a pep in your step. You have a little bit of confidence boost there. Obviously, there's that level of concern from Paul Heyman, the wise man. I just hope they handle it in a delicate and intelligent way. Because Cody Rhodes, he's not losing the title to Solo Sokoa. There is no doubt in my mind that wherever this match takes place, and I'm thinking money in the bank, he can't lose. In fact, why would you even put Solo Sokoa in this position? He just won a match. And now we're going to have him face Cody Rhodes to seemingly lose. I don't know why you would do that. That's my criticism for it. It's dangerous booking because Cody Rhodes had already beaten the bloodline. He'd beaten Roman Reigns. And now we're reassociating him with the group. The only sense of it that I can make is that Solo Sokoa loses the match. Obviously. He's not going to win the title. If they would have crowned him champion, that would be one of the craziest things ever. Just because I don't see it happening in in, in the logical sense. If they were to have Solo Sokoa lose against Cody Rhodes, which they will, given you know the opportunity that they booked the match, that gives the opportunity to have Roman Reigns return. That opens the door for him to come back and say, like, what have you been doing while I've been gone? Because I don't think... Anybody's been in contact with Roman since he's left WrestleMania. They've already said about Paul Heyman. And they've said, per orders of the tribal chief, I don't think that's Roman Reigns. I think we're going off of Solo Sokoa. I think maybe even The Rock. Who knows? I mean, not me. I'm not working for the company. I'm just a casual viewer or more of a devoted viewer. 
like many of you. They run that risk. But then it's like, who else is there? LA Knight, I think, was a viable option to face Cody. But he's currently in a feud with Logan Paul. Right? Kevin Owens is a baby face. Santos Escobar is not going to go into that feud. You look at it, and I guess it would have to be Solo Sokoa. Because it serves as like a buffer for getting to Randy Orton. I just look at it in that sense. I can't tell how they're going to introduce that story because I feel like you'd have to turn Randy heel at some point. You could go the route of the respect very much like so how the AJ Styles feud went initially a backlash. Randy Orton wants that opportunity. Cody Rhodes, ever the appreciative and gracious champion that he is, would probably grant his former mentor a title opportunity. At SummerSlam, that's where I'm thinking it takes place. But then it's like, what do we do in between? Because, like I said, we have money in the bank. In terms of the card, in terms of the hierarchy of the roster, it, it does make sense. And I feel like that's the route we have to go. I just worry about the ramifications and the consequences that may follow of having the Bloodline's Solo Sokoa lose. Because the Bloodline, it's very apparent. It's very clear that the bloodline isn't what it once was. I think there's been a level of steam that has fallen off. I feel like the momentum's fallen off. Without Roman, without the Usos, it's not really the bloodline anymore. But you can't change the name and add something different to it. I once saw somewhere, if you were to add the bloodline 2.0 or the new bloodline, you're already asking for disaster. Because anytime you throw... The word new in front of something, it's already an automatic failure. I mean, you look at the new rockers, you know, Leaf Cassidy and Marty Jannetty. The new Hart Foundation, which all due respect to Owen Hart and Jim Neidhart, they did what they could, but it's not the same. You know, New Coke, I mean, whatever happened to New Coke. I digress. But my point is... WWE has done such a great job with the Bloodline storyline in the grand scheme of things. When you take a step back and you look at how it's been presented and how it's been booked, nearly flawless. Nearly. But right now in this moment, it's difficult for a lot of us to become invested in Tonga Tonga and Tonga Loa. They are presented as these super tough, intimidating Tongans that Solo Sokoa has enlisted in his group. But only so much can happen when you're losing matches. I, I don't look at them as a winning group. And that's a shame. But I feel like that might be by design. You look at Roman Reigns and how tight he had the reins, no pun intended, on his group. Everything had to be precise. Every, there was a standard to live by. Solo Sokoa, it's not necessarily a standard. It's more so of an expectation. That's why these moments are so crucial to the story. Yeah, you know, we might be looking at it as, eh, it's not the same. Like, eh, we want Roman. And believe me, we all want Roman. But these little intricate details that Solo Soko was giving off are crucial to the story that will probably lead to a Roman Reigns return. Maybe even a Roman Reigns versus Solo Sokoa matchup. Because Solo Sokoa is the youngest member of that bloodline, you know, with the Usos and Roman Reigns. He's just learning. You know, he's looking at it, grabbing bits and pieces of information based off of experience. He hasn't done it. He hasn't led a group. So seeing how Roman Reigns did it, he's taking his interpretation of the group. He's taking his interpretation on how Roman Reigns ruled with an iron fist. And he's taking that intimidation tactic. Whereas I think for Roman, it was that level of respect. He was the tribal chief. He is the head of the table. It carry that level of expectation, that respect to the title, that respect to being the leader of the bloodline, where Solo Sokoa is like the interim. He's the, uh, the, for the time being, really. And just because you can put a title on someone, that doesn't necessarily mean they fit the title. Like I said, Solo Sokoa is still learning. I don't anticipate anything big 
from this matchup with Cody. What I am very much interested in is the callbacks. Because Cody is synonymous with the bloodline. With that WrestleMania 39 feud. With him dethroning Roman Reigns' 1,316 day title reign. This is now that opportunity for Solo Sokoa to say, I need my retribution. I need to defend my family. You took away the one thing that kept our family together. And after he meddled into their business, where's everybody? Jay is on Monday Night Raw, main event Jay Uso. Jimmy Uso kicked out of the bloodline. Roman Reigns, MIA. All because of Cody Rhodes, Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, everyone that interfered into the business of the bloodline. I look at the way it's going to be billed. Tonight's episode of Friday Night Smackdown will be very telling on how we're going to approach this storyline. Is Cody Rhodes going to be the kind of babyface who, because you attacked me, I challenge you to a match? Okay, I'll only give you the match if it's for the title. Is it going to be one of those deals? Are we going to have Solo Sokoa win a number one contenders match? Are we going to have him bully his way into the matchup? If you ask me, I would much prefer Solo Sokoa earning this matchup. I don't want him to have to bully his way into it or have Cody, you know, lent it to him, basically. I want to see Solo Sokoa win convincingly. I don't want him with any shenanigans. I would like him to be a viable threat to the title. Now, as I said, clearly he's not. He's not going to win the championship, but still, it's that level of disbelief that we have to suspend. And if Solo Soko is not presented as a credible threat, it defeats the purpose of the feud. It really lessens the value of what we're watching. But it's like I said, if you follow the podcast, you would know that I do have faith in Triple H. I do have faith in the writing, in the creative, and maybe it is by design. Maybe we're not supposed to believe in Solo Sokoa. Maybe we're supposed to see him as this facade of a leader. A pretender, rather. Because when Roman Reigns comes, who knows what's going to happen, right? People are saying it'll be a babyface turn. I feel like it'll be much along the lines of like a tweener. Look at like an MJF, for example. MJF's a heel. I don't care what anybody says. MJF is always going to be a heel because of the way he presents himself. Now, we like it. You know, we're fans of it. We support him. We cheer him. But that doesn't change the fact that he is a heel. I think that's going to be Roman. Roman's going to have a lot of the same characteristics that he had in the bloodline. It's just going to be directed towards different people. Obviously, the members of the bloodline. The characteristics don't change. I think, if anything, it'll be an evolution of the character. And seeing what he is seeing. Because assuming he's keeping up with the product. Kayfabe-wise, you know, in story. He is now going to have to react accordingly. I'm the tribal chief. I'm the head of the table. Even if he doesn't have the championship, what gives Solo Sokoa the right? Yeah, he has the opportunity to watch over the group, but he's not definitively the tribal chief. And I know people are going to say, well, he said he was the heir. That's fine, but Roman Reigns isn't retiring. He's taking a little sabbatical, a little time off, a little R&R. He was champion for almost four years. I think he's earned that much. I think a lot of the attention from the audience that is, it's going to go directly to Solo Sokoa and the bloodline and how they carry on this story. Cody, deservingly so, should have the attention as the champion. He earned that right. And shout out to Cody Rhodes too. He's had three banger of matches on these PLEs. Two with AJ Styles, one with Logan Paul, and his character work, it's its Cody Rhodes. It's what you expect. He is the proper face of a company. He's the guy you want to represent your brand. He has the great smile. He's great with kids. Very eloquent when he speaks. He's able to express himself in a professional yet passionate manner. Has love for the business. Has a history within the business. He is the ideal candidate. I, I look at and a quick sidebar here with Cody Rhodes. The interest of him turning heel is increasingly becoming more apparent. And that's always how it's been. It's the chase. So now that he's at the top and not chasing the title, we want to make things fresh. I, myself, I'm not complaining. I like what I see with Cody Rhodes. I look forward to all of his segments. But there is that level of interest 
if he turns heel. Now, in most instances, we would say when he turns heel. But I look at Cody and I'm like, he's John Cena. The money, the merch, the profit they're making with him. Why would you turn him heel? I mean, it would be great for him to go full Homelander. Because that would be very, very appealing. Just imagine a heel Cody Rhodes. Having him turn his back on the audience. And maybe not even turn his back on the audience, but becoming so consumed with the WWE Championship, very much so how Roman Reigns became consumed with the title. Having a, a tight grip on it and not wanting to, to let it go. He held that title. The title his father would want it, but wasn't able to earn. So he does anything in his power to make sure he retains. There's potential in a heel Cody Rhodes but I don't think we're going to see that anytime soon. If we ever do. And I just think it's that John Cena effect. Why would you turn him heel? WWE never turned Cena heel, you know, after he became the face. They never turned Hogan heel because WCW did that, not WWE. I don't envision them doing it with Cody Rhodes. You could even learn from your mistake. Look at the big baby face they turned heel, Stone Cold. And that was criticized. I think they learn from their mistake and they don't do it. But you guys go ahead and let me know in the comments below. What are your thoughts on this apparent feud between Solo Sokoa and Cody Rhodes? Is it too soon to have him associated with the bloodline? Can they salvage this anticipation and try to make it interesting? Because we know Cody's not going to lose to Solo. Do you think this is when Roman finally retains? Or excuse me, returns? Please sound off in the comments below. Please make sure to like, share, share. And subscribe to the YouTube channel as well as follow the J Area Podcast. Guys, you guys are doing fantastic. The goal was a 1,000 subs by the end of the year, and we haven't even hit July. And we're oh so close. Oh so close. I can't express to you guys the level of gratitude and appreciation I have as we continue to grow the YouTube channel, the J Area Podcast. I look forward to bringing you guys more content in regards to pro wrestling and at some point, I would love to do some Q&A episodes of the podcast where we can just share our thoughts and talk pro wrestling as I give you guys my opinions. And hell, you guys can give me yours through the comments. So with that being said, my name is Jose Ramos Jr. Thank you for joining me on this episode of the J Area Podcast, and I will see you all in the next episode.